All right, I'm the Flight Rate Master, and today we're going to hook up some scopes. All right, so I'm going to show both the Varus and the Pico on this one. We're hooking up to a ignition coil. Obviously, the first thing you need to understand is circuit design. Now, the, code, the vehicle we are working on is a simple forward product with a two-wire coil. So you've got power and control. So we're gonna look at the primary side of the ignition system. Now, obviously this is a GM coil design and it's gonna be a little bit different. You've got ground, low reference, ignition control and voltage. Now, if you understand scoping, you'd know you go to ignition control. It's important to understand circuit design. If you need help on understanding how components work, go to scannerdanner.com, get his ebook or AES Wave sells it. Excellent reference for understanding circuit design. We have back probed two coil connectors, one for the snap on and one for the Pico. So we're gonna go ahead and set up both scopes how we think it's gonna range as far as voltage and all that. So we're gonna go lab scope four channel on the snap on. And we are gonna go to our button right there. We're gonna turn off channel number one because obviously we're only hooked on one channel. We're gonna go to scale and we're gonna to go to 400 volts. Now the thing is when you're scoping a system like this, you need to go high and then you adjust down. We're gonna do that, we're in one second. Again, as you get experience, you'll kind of figure out where you need to be. We're gonna go 500 seconds right now. On the Pico, we're gonna turn off Channel number one, we're on channel number two because this one is protected to 200 volts, unlike the snap-on, which has protection on all of its circuits. Now we're at one millisecond per division. We're gonna go one of the advantages of the Pico, by the way, is the ability to zoom in, where a snap-on, you have to zoom out. So we're gonna go 500 milliseconds, just like the snap-on, and we're gonna crank it up and see how they both do. Now we're kind of maxing out the voltage on the uh, Pico, but we can go ahead and pause that and we can go ahead, windowed zoom. Okay, zoomed in. We can see a lot of detail of the burn line. Now this is a known good car, 
So as you can see, we've got primary and secondary coil firing, and then you've got the oscillation as it burns off the last of the hydrocarbons. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of doing primary ignition waveform analysis. This is a known good car, so this is what it should look like. Now on the snap-on, as you can see, we got very little detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to 200 volts. Now we want to set a trigger. Go to setup, trigger. We go to manual. We exit. We got a manual trigger right here. We pull it up. Now we're not getting a whole lot of detail and we can't zoom in with snap-on. So what we're going to do is go to setup. We're going to go to a a different time base. Let's go We're going to stop it right there. change it down to 50 milliseconds we get more detail so again that's the biggest drawback of the snap-on is you can't zoom in you can only zoom out but as you can see we've got a very similar waveform just not as defined but perfectly usable for diagnosis. All right, now my trigger's working. Gotta love Snap-on. But when you first capture a waveform, don't set a trigger or set it automatically. That way you get, you get to see the signal and if it's a good signal. Now, this is where scoping known good waveforms comes in. This is a known good car. This is what a correctly operating coil on a Ford Fusion should look like. According to the snap-on scope. And this is a known good with a Pico scope. This is one of the big advantages of the Pico is the amount of detail you get. And you can, as you can see from pulling back it does a much better view of that signal to give you an idea boom and boom now spikes don't too much worry about but that's what we're worried about is this detail. This is one of the reasons for the Pico. You can see the oscillations and you get a lot more detail of your signal. Hence why a lot of people use a Pico, but the snap-on is just as usable. It just the waveforms are a little displayed a little differently with a little less detail. Now as you get as you use a scope, now what I did is I changed the time base right here down to five milliseconds. Now unfortunately we're a little zoomed in, so if we pause and zoom out, we get a lot more overview of it.
and we can see more of the detail. So you just have to learn how to use your tool. It comes down to using your tool and understanding its idiosyncrasies. Whether it's a snap-on tool, having to zoom out to get an overall picture of it, or now as you can see with the right settings on snap-on, we can get a very similar picture of that set that waveform of that signal. It's just you have to understand setting your tool, time base and setting it correctly. The Pico is much more forgiving as far as getting a good picture over the snap-on because of the simple zoom feature. Now, if you notice this slide down here, this is called a buffer. This is basically the storage part of the oscilloscope. If you've already taken your picture and you want to analyze it, you stop it and you've got all that data in this buffer. And you can play around with looking at the waveform. You can analyze it. You can go, you know, it's spiked here, oscillations there, second pulse, burn time, and analyze it. That's why we have a digital storage oscilloscope, is that buffer allows us to analyze our waveforms. Now again, we're not analyzing this waveform. This is a known good on a known good car, just a car in for a starter but I wanted to show you getting your first waveforms. Setting your voltage high, adjusting down to where it needs to be, playing with your time base to figure out how to get the best picture, your scale. As you can see, to get this picture that looks very much like the Pico, I'm at 200 volts on a five millisecond time base. And Every car is going to be different, or every signal is going to be different on what you need to do. You need to understand circuit design and play with it. Scoping is not a, oh, pull it out whenever and you'll be an expert at it. It's something you take practice. If you have a scope, practice. If you got downtime, scope something. Go through and analyze a known good. Save it for the next time. So as we can see, you know, coil, it's a Ford, so it's got a second strike, and we've got a known good waveform. Took my cursors off. Those can be used for analyzing burn time, stuff like that. We're not really interested in that right now. Now, basic overview on the Pico as far as the same thing. The advantage of the Pico is, again, we can zoom way in. You can take a capture at a second of time and just zoom in. And if you can't figure out, there's a reason why I did a touch screen. And obviously all your values are down here of how long it was on. You can measure voltage. and you get a good known waveform. Now that's, this is one of the problems right here is comparing known good with captures taken on different scopes is there's going to be some variance simply because of the scope design. The time base and all of that can be very different. So it's best to get a known good off the same tool and use the same settings as to facilitate matching it up if it's a known good. So when you're first setting up your scope to capture a capture, either set an automatic trigger or no trigger at all just so you can see the signal and then you can pull a trigger in after the fact manually to see your waveform. Make sure and set wide enough so you actually see the signal. 
Now, if you on a snap-on, if it you set up a trigger and it doesn't see anything, a manual trigger, you won't see anything. That's why I always say automatic or no trigger at all to get your first signal. Pico is a little more forgiving on that. I know it sounds like I'm an ad for Pico, but really is nice. Uh, once you've got your capture, then you can set a trigger, then you can play with your time base to get a capture the way you like it, the way you want to see it. Enough detail, you know, if you're looking at a, you know, cranking compression waveform, you don't need a whole lot of detail. But if you're looking at a coil oscillation, you need a lot more detail, so you need to go in and play with your time base. Your voltage levels, play with those. You know, it's it's as simple as that. It's it's playing. I know I keep saying that, but setting your time base when you don't use the assisted part of the tool for the snap-on, which I don't really use that much anymore. I mean, I used to use it way back in the day, but nowadays I just get a wiring diagram and understand how the circuit works and just go to the four-channel lab scope. <clears throat> but getting your first capture, simply plug it in, know you've got a connection, notes trigger, set your scale and set your scale and time base to make sure you get the signal on the screen and then narrow it down from there. And as you build confidence, you'll get better at understanding, oh, this is going to be a this signal, it's going to be a 12 volt, you know, square wave. This is going to be a, you know, 200 volt coil firing event. But first time you're going to use a scope today, even today, if I use a scope, I start big, narrow down. Once I got the signal the way I want it, then I'm either going to pause it to analyze it, save it, you know, if I'm using the Pico, I'm going in. If I'm going with a snap-on, I'm going as far in as I can to get as much detail as I can. Unless I'm looking for dropouts or that kind of thing, then you want repetition. You want a longer time base. We'll get into time bases in another episode and playing with those, but I just wanted to give you a first-time hookup, kind of what you need to do and a quick little lesson on scopes. Got to see a nice little waveform on two different tools, so hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like playing with scopes, give me a thumbs down. If you want to see more videos about scoping, make sure and subscribe. Comments, let me know what you think. And as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.